Okay. There we go. Okay. Thank you. You're awesome. So simple, Ian. <laughs> right, because there are two zooms on there, so some people get confused. Okay, so yeah. Do you know how to admit someone? Yeah, just click okay. on it. We think so. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, if, if you have any problems, just give a call. Then. Thank you. I can go there soon. Okay. Okay. There he is, Lenny. Hello, Dylan. How you doing? Okay. Well, there you saw us. This is the copy line. And they're like, so okay. uh, not, not so, it may have a word or two different, but not nothing substantial. Too many things going on. Ah, uh, yes, that's for sure. And if that's the case in both in June and uh, September, especially first half of September up until up till about the twenty well, till, till about the twenty-fifth, well things quiet down. So I, I, I I'm voting Rockland, so I've got to you know deal with that. And so it's a lot of activity. Okay. Well, over the years, I've, I've had set sail boats. Yeah, I've had sail boats in Rockland since the early 90s. Uh, we've been downsizing <laughs> as yeah. the years go on. So I actually, I just have a, uh, uh, a keel day sailor now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, uh, well, I, well, you know what I have. It's, it's, your old, it's not your boat. It's, but it's the same as yeah, Harvard 20. 20. You have a Harvard 20. Yeah. Something I hired and you gave me the, gave me the information about who, who bought yours, a guy down in Southern Maine. Well, we, we actually sold ours to Pam and Mark. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Super right. Burger. And then they're the ones who gave me the very Yeah, because I didn't remember. Uh, right, I right. I don't remember much. So uh, yeah, yeah. They, they they gave me the information. It's a nice boat. That's oh a, yeah, it's a good boat. Oh yeah, it's a very good boat. Yeah, it's a good boat for uh, it's a good boat for Rockland Harbor. Is it so? Oh yeah, yeah. A lot of breeze in Rockland Harbor. Yeah. Most days, occasionally there's not, but frequently there's a. It's it's blowing uh, anywhere from ten to twenty in Rockland Harbor, so that's a really good mood for that. That's good. That's a good breeze. Yeah, uh, that is a, a really good breeze. Uh, that um, with a self tailing jib that that you know makes it simple. Yeah, um, it's a very easy boat to sail. I think. Well, it's it's a it's an easy boat to sail, but it's a difficult boat to sail well. Uh, for, yeah, well. To sail well in a competitive sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's uh, there are no there are no there are no fleets of them in New England. No. But there San are. San Diego, I think, is one, right? Isn't that a uh, big fleet there? Or where? San Diego. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the biggest. Yeah. It's it's actually uh, Newport Harbor, which is right near San Diego. Okay. Um, oh, really? Up in Newport? Huh? No, no, not Newport. Not Newport, Rhode Island. Newport. California, oh, the Newport Beach. I'm thinking yeah, about, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's up by there. Um, yeah, that's uh, Blue Child. That's, that's between San Diego and Long Beach. And it's like, oh, I see. I don't know that area. Yeah, my, my parents lived in Rancho Palos Verdes, which is okay. uh, right. Um, you got uh, Long Beach, uh, just okay. before Long Beach. And, oh, okay. And uh, I think um, Newport is just uh, south of there. Okay, that well, in fact, that's the. Um, that's the home port of it all. The uh, the design actually came out of there. The uh, the origin the origin of the design is that there were there are like three or four different yacht clubs in that harbor. It's a big harbor, really. It's a really big harbor, uh, and 
uh, back in in the early '90s, there were a bunch of older guys like our age now uh, who got to, who had been who had done a bunch of racing in bigger boats and got together and said we'd really like to get a a boat that is comfortable for day sailing but would be really good for competitive racing. Uh, uh, but kind of relaxed, but com but good competitive racing, and they looked, you know, they kind of looked around for what might be, a, you know, available. Just you know, in, in terms of one designs, they couldn't find anything they really liked, and they wanted a keelboat because they were used to they were used to sailing keelboats. They didn't want a sailboat, and uh, and so ultimately they approached um, a, a one of the boat builders that was nearby. Uh, yeah. Shock, yeah, and uh, and and, the, and their in house designer. Uh, who happened to be one of uh, the boat builder's sons, Steve Shock, uh, uh, designed the boat, working with the, you know, kind of working with these guys, and then they did a couple of, uh, uh, you know, they did mock-ups and they and whatever. So they, that's the boat they ultimately came up with, and so and that was right there in Newport Harbor. Um, so that's where the biggest fleet is. It's you know, it's strung out among like. Uh, three or four yacht clubs plus other people, uh, and so there's a one design fleet there, and there's one up in um, oh, uh, Santa Barbara. Was it just and then there's one understand and then there are three fleets on the east coast, one on the west coast of Florida. Uh, Probably not all that far. Central uh, Harbor area. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, that's just uh, that's just north of uh, yeah of Fort Myers. Uh, okay. Sorry, uh, okay, we're ready. Okay. Yep. Hello. 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 Hi. We ready to call the meeting to order? Well, yeah. Was yeah. It was a consolation prize for being late. Okay. Thank I'll just you. Just pass you my. There's one in front of you. Thank you. Okay. Hi, hey, Charlie. Thank you. Hi. Thanks for coming. This, oh, uh, yeah, I read this. Very this helpful to have you here. Hey, Charlie, you want to grab one of these? Like, it's easier for you to come in the meeting. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, and we got uh, there's Kimberly. Yes, yep. we got Kimberly Dallas on Zoom. So, uh, so uh, any right? Oh, right. Oh, it was coming. Okay. I'm Paul Bradley, and uh, so. Um, Karen, who do you think is going to take the, the minutes? Yes. Are you going to take the minutes? Okay. All right. Great. Thank you guys all did something, so I got to fit you in. Where's where's Paul? I guess I missed the He's right. not his his fishing. Fishing is Montana. Oh, this is Montana. Montana. Yeah. Okay. okay. I think so. So the first thing is a uh, full business consideration yeah. of the August twenty seventh, twenty twenty four minutes. Uh, has everybody had a chance to review it? Or any yes. Comments on it? Looked good. To Very know. in depth. Yes, thank you, Paul and Lenny. Lenny, for your edits. Yeah. That really, you know, it, it, it's a good, it's a good way to do it. Let everybody weigh in. Um, do I hear a motion to uh, approve the minutes? I move to approve the minutes. Yes. I'll second. 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 Oh, I'm not a member yet. Yeah. Or, um, well, we should make a deal with this. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's approved. It's approved. Um, Gianno, yeah, I, I filled out the application. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I have to go to the select board. Right, and, and then... Mary's telling me everything I need to do. Okay, yeah. good. Great. So, Chris? Um, yeah, so why don't we... Um, everybody's been working on their assignments. Uh, not easy. Um, uh, what what do you guys think about just going through um, back to the uh, the updated um, sheet, which is now tearing down? Just go through and and talk about the points. Uh, does that make sense? To, yeah, to everybody. Why not? Yeah. Um, uh, Paul's taking uh, the uh, septic systems, but we can still um, talk about it, and we. we Apologize for not being able to uh, get them um, get everything squared away right now, um, but uh, I think we've gone through these several times. And the first one is um, to require inspection of all septic systems uh, in areas mapped as sensitive soils, 
comma, all systems that do not have documents filed with the town of Belgrade, comma, all systems over the 1995, comma, and all systems at advertised rental properties. Um, I think we're going to have to pare that down. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm thinking I'd love to see us do it with advertised rental properties, but that starts getting mucky, I think. Do you guys agree? I think we have to find out what's been running this place for years and they just keep going back to the same families every year. So it isn't even something that would be advertised. I'm oh, sorry, could you say that again? What was that? Sure. My comment was that I think there's a lot of people that do uh, rent their property and I think they do it from like word of mouth. They've rented to the same families for years and years. So not every rental is going to be advertised from my experience. Right, and and that's I think that's why I had originally put in um, the word advertised, uh, um, meaning because I have the same feeling. I, I have uh, family members that rent out to they have places that they rent out and they rented them for years to the same people and they never advertise it. So, but I guess this, I think we might get some real pushback on this one because it sort of gets into the. Um, the uh, um, Airbnb project that I think there's another committee looking at? Well, yes and no. There isn't another committee. It hasn't been formed. It has not been formed. They've had a lot of difficulty getting members. Uh, there is, uh, there's still effort underway to form the committee. And uh, there was recently a, a new, member, new person who volunteered to be on it. And Interestingly, since this just came up, um, uh, one way that has been mentioned recently as a potential, uh, a, let's see, a, a potential uh, way to, to regulate uh, short-term rentals without without getting into the the weeds of attempting to to regulate niceness that is uh, trying to prevent people from uh, causing difficulties with too much traffic and parking and, and, and noise and such things. But one way to do that would be possibly through regulating septic systems in the sense that for A, it would require that short-term rentals whether advertised or otherwise, this is all uh, unclear at this point, mm -hmm. uh, would have to be registered with the town. And then uh, mm -hmm. their septic systems would uh, have to be um, inspected on a regular basis. And they would not be able to re uh, advertise for or rent to more people than the septic system is designed for. And the mm. septic system would be designed for a certain number of bedrooms. And I believe there's an assumption of how many people there are per bedroom, like two. two. Okay. So if you have a three bedroom house, the assumption is that there are not going to be more than six people. Um, so is this is, um, but that's all oh, that for. Townwide would this be for all? Yeah. Um, oh, it would. It would have to be townwide. I don't. I don't believe that there's any. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't speak for that, but I, I, I assume that it would be townwide. I haven't heard any discussion about just Israel and Zone. Because because that's this was in here to pertain just to the shoreline zone because of the idea that you have a you know, an older property that's been lately used and now it's it's being advertised as a rental and it's getting a lot of damage yeah. from the septic would be close to the lake and yeah well, I, right i mean i, I this, this is all hearsay oh no it's more than hearsay <laughs> but it's it's all in cohe it's right. just early discussions so mm -hmm. and also ours would only be like belgrade Oh, absolutely. Anything anything we do is only in belgrade. Right. It has nothing to do with Oakland or Sydney. But I think what we need to do is decide what's the most egregious piece of this okay. that we want. And that that's what we should well, try to focus on. Say anything about 
Airbnbs that are not in the shoreline zone because well that's uh, right but what I was discussing is this potential other committee that is yet to be formed right yeah. so it's not this is not what we're talking about for us yeah we so, can still say something though. well I, I guess the the question I have is our well let's see um there were four of us at uh, plus Paul that were at the planning board meeting, and uh, right. um, it's not going to be an easy lift. Is a short message on that, right? Um, so, um, so I think that um, even though, <clears throat> so I, I guess we feel strongly, we have to feel strongly about the points that we argue for, and we have to feel that they're achievable. I guess is uh, right, um, and. Uh, I, I mean, I, I love this idea, but I'm just wondering if we start talking about advertised rental properties, then we have to define that, and that has to be enforced. And I think it just opens up a lot of questions. That's that's my only well, concern. Well, definitely, if we write it in the rules, we don't have to be worrying about enforcing because the neighbors will do that. And if we really care about septic systems, then it's got to include people overusing them. And that's would be one way. So we, I, I, okay. I, I mean, I, I I like it. I'm just trying. I to... mean, just make it simple. Just say if somebody has a Airbnb or a rental property advertised, that, advertised that advertised, they need to uh, I think it's a they need to have their septic system match the capacity of their property, their rental. Is there some sort of overall agreement about the first part of this eliminating the very last phrase? Am I under the impression, wrongly under the impression that there's some um, talk about making this require that people understand that all septic systems in areas mapped to sensitive soils, blah, 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 blah. So all, all that, um, I, I don't think we have any agreement on any of this bullet point um oh. yeah i think it's all up for discussion i i happen to hone in on advertised rental properties as being one that i was questioning uh, but it sounds like we've got some good uh feelings that we want to push that forward uh, i would i would debate whether we want to bother with sensitive soils because that's another thing that we have to potentially get into i i would focus on the documents and the you know, documentation filed with the town and systems older than 1995. Is that why 95, Charlie? You know, uh... they upgraded these systems in 95. The original standards went in mid 70s, and then an updated set of standards went into effect in the mid 90s. 95. Okay. Yeah. So it, it, as a cutoff, that's a reasonable. A reasonable you know start you know they also need to have been maintained since then because that's you know 30 oh. years is about the life of a system if it's badly maintained right or or, or if you're unlucky so so uh, does that answer your question jenna that we're still thinking about this so uh -huh. do we want to what, what are we well, I think there's going to be a lot of pushback to Russian properties. I, I know that. I mean, just listening to go to that meeting. Yeah. You know, that, that what if Alexander, is that his name? There you go. He's very uh, opposed to any kind of environmental economic impact on anybody. And I think this would mm -hmm. really, yeah. I think it shines a light right on his issue. Um, I, I'm in favor of all this because I feel like it's the Airbnbs that are overusing. I mean, I I see how people use them in our area, and that there are tons of people that are using these houses, and I don't know that they know the rules or not. So I'm I firmly believe we need to do this. The question is, what is going to make it through the planning department? Let alone. Yeah, the other two hate to see us worry that much about. But we that. do need to say something. So, um, in my mind, I see us separating these things, and so this first bullet point would be multiple bullet points. Um, so, advertised renting properties would be a separate bullet point with some logic behind it, explaining behind it, and then we're. 
potentially the planning board could say, well, we like this one, but we don't like that one. And they could strike that out and, or we could argue for it. That's another. a good way. It sort of separates things out and, thing, yeah. and we try to nail down each thing. I mean, the whole concept of negotiation is to come up with a reason, all the reasons why this is going to work. And then, you know, there's no rebuttal theoretically, but mm -hmm. on sensitive soils, can we strike that? Is that important? I I think we could strike that. I feel like we could. I feel like it requires so much understanding, you know? It's technical. Yeah. Um. So then, so, so strike that one and, uh, and leave in, um, Systems that do not have documents filed with the town, all systems older than 1995, and all systems advertised uh, as rental properties. That seem, does everybody mm -hmm. seem okay with that? Mm -hmm. And that's in this building. Oh, yeah, that's a, everything. Um, we're yeah. What was that, sorry? I was just saying I agree with that. Okay, <laughs> great. So just to be pragmatic, let's, uh, let's, um, Keep moving forward. Um, so then the next bullet point is require all septic inspection reports to be filed with the town. Um, now, Paul, when Paul looks at this, he'll dig into that and the, and the ordinance and see whether that's already required, um, which I think, Lenny, you found some things that were already in the ordinance. Yeah. yeah so, and we've kind of done this sort of from a blue sky standpoint, yeah, not, oh, sure. not necessarily recognizing whether something is already in the ordinance or not. So, um, but I think that seems, everybody okay with that bullet mm -hmm. point? Yes. Um, and then uh, then we have something which is probably not suitable for the ordinance to use BLA or Seven Lakes Alliance in turn to research and digitize existing sep sep septic documentation. That could be, that's not a, a change to the ordinance, but yeah. maybe, that's yeah. a, maybe that's an explanation that Paul could put in for, or I can put in in the introduction to this. this. Of course, if you use those BLA or something like the Lions, you're going to get pushback from one person. Okay, well, we so be stay, careful. Use, use intern. Right. I, I agree with that since we now know there's uh, mm -hmm. animosity there. So, uh, um, and, and Charlie, if you missed it, there was some discussion at the planning board that basically was saying that Seven Lakes Alliance was not held in high esteem by all members. I have one yeah. person on the board. Was who actually, managed she was actually screaming. His, yeah. Really? Who managed to use his force of voice to persuade other people on the board. It, um, this is being recorded, so. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so well, um, discretion. Is, thank you. Uh, I always, we didn't name names. I always <laughs> be reminded, please. Thank you. Yeah, okay. um, <laughs> not that everybody can look at them. <laughs> well, <laughs> all we need is one person. Do they record their meetings too? Yes. Yeah. Well, well yeah, it's on public records. So. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> So um, okay, so so we'll just say that as a as a um, as a in the intro maybe for this um, in this section. Um, malfunctioning system shall be repaired or replaced as soon as pra practicable and within one year. The difference between practical and practicable. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I I looked it up and practical. Practicable means that you can actually take action and do something. I think it is, <laughs> but I'm not sure. Anyway, all right, I we'll, uh, it's fine. We'll live with that. Um, so I think that seemed to be something that might. Well, we'll see whether that's in the ordinance already or not. But that's an important thing. I think Dave uh, wrote thought that was important. Um, Change specs to uh, build on top of the soil. That's came from David Rowe, that's important. Um, Required certification and documentation of septic system be filed with town when property title is transferred to family members outside of a sale. What does everybody think about that? 
That's a good bullet point. I think. That no, I, I completely agree that that's important. Uh, it should be achievable, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. How that happens when somebody has to a lawyer would file a um, yeah you have to title change, yeah you have to change the title if it's if it's if it's the property is being transferred whether it's being whether money ch is changing hands or not uh, it seems so to the name of the change yeah. yeah okay so oh, how does that get that well the tax it's the well, I mean, the town of Elbridge would have to change the name of the tax taxes. Right, right. You showed that. Yeah. 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 Sure. Okay. Right. Two. Cons were going down through the septic section now. Okay. Just starting from the top yeah. and going through everything, just to keep beating it up. Um, uh, require new and replacement systems to inspection ports, ground level covers, and other access features. I'm not sure if there are other access features. Did Charlie or Hans? Do you guys know if there other, I mean, I have, for example, a, I have to dig up my hatch to access my, um, my tank, you know. Um, and then the new standard is that there be a uh, access, like a little chimney access. Yeah, is that, is that a new standard? Is that the? It's all the new systems, the design, that's how they're being put so is that required or do you think that that's just for convenience? Because it's a real pain to, to, I mean, I have sprawled in the side of my house so how many inches it is out from the side of the house and then I have to dig it out and-, and wow. You can't just put a rock on it? I can't put a what? A rock? Um, okay. It's in the driveway. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then people drive over it because we just pumped it out to three years and-, and uh, you know, that gravel gets like loose down, it gets really uh, hard to dig up. So do you know if that's required or? or... I don't know, but I'll get the book and check it real quick. I, I think new systems, it might be designed, but you know. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Mine doesn't have a patch like that, and it's fairly new, but I had to have somebody check it and it's not too down too far. So yeah. I put a rock there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, once you know where it is, but it's this just happens to be in gravel that it's driven on and, yeah. and it's just tight. That's all. Yeah. Um uh, I've got a question just from recording this and all. Yes, yeah. we're kind of going down each one. Do you think it's It'd be enough to say a general discussion and these were all approved or the, I've got the background writing down words in it. Um how much detail did we want to I think you could you could say that um that we went through these and um removed some and yeah. and approved others and the next revision of this document will show oh, oh, what's what's next. rather than rather than oh. As to a point you made uh, a few minutes ago, Chris, I, mean, I think it really, I'm not quite sure the value of what we're doing right now because it really is important to go into the ordinance as it currently exists yeah. and look at what's there before we start putting these things onto it because, well, for two reasons. The one that you mentioned. Uh, which is things in many cases are already addressed. Right. Uh, 
Um, and so we have to look at what compare with compare what we're suggesting with what is already uh, addressed there. Um, and then the other reason is the one thing that I mentioned in my in my comments in my my report, and that is you just have to really be thinking very much in terms of the specificity that the ordinance requires, right? Um, and you don't really have that in mind unless you're really right there in the weeds with the ordinance. If you just sort of think about what you'd like to have and should have, then it's easy to just kind of phrase it that way. But we, the ordinance doesn't work like that. You've got, in the, once you get to the ordinance, it's got to be bang, you know, very, very, very specific. Right. So I guess what I'm arguing or, or suggesting is that it would be better to actually look at take a few minutes, read that section of the ordinance, like on septic systems, and then come back and look at this, rather than just go through it. So, so now, what if, if, if we go through this now and sort of yeah. kind of, once again, sort of look at everything, because we've never really made a determination of what we want in or what we're out. Okay. And then, but isn't that Paul? Then Paul will take this. Oh, uh, okay. And then, uh, you know, and, and then Tanya and, and Jana will take the vegetative buffer. Yeah. And then compare that to the ordinance. Okay. okay. And and know where in the ordinance the bullet point may fall. Okay. And then, um, and then we'll come back to that again. Okay. That, yeah. Okay. Well, fine. But I, th I thought that I think that's a real. Yeah, that's a, something that requires somebody to study it, I think. Okay, but I thought that's what you're supposed to do. But, uh, yeah, I did too, because what I discovered was there's very good stuff in here. We it's went very hard to, under, look at this. it's very hard to understand, however. I had a civil engineer sit down next to me to explain the whole tree cutting business oh. and draw me a map so I could understand what I was reading. So the problem isn't that it isn't there. There are some things here that aren't there, at least in the section I was looking at. Um, but I was surprised how much good stuff is there. Mm -hmm and needs to be recognized. I also feel like it, there's a lot on vegetated, vegetated land that is in the back and needs to be referenced as I thought maybe that would be a way to do it. I have no idea. But the idea that all of this structural stuff is in the front and in the back is all this stuff about vegetation. Most people don't know very much about it. And even though I do, I need a civic engineer to explain to me the language of this. So, but I think it is important to read the sections and be clear about what's in here. Because otherwise, I, I felt like we were coming up with a lot of things that were already in it. Well, so what you could do is if there's a bullet point that we talk about and we want to have in the ordinance and you go through the ordinance and you look at that and you say, well, this, and then you make a note, this bullet point is explained on such and such a page section, you know, um, and then you can explain to us and then we can delete it from our list of changes. Does that sound, I mean, somebody, if we sit as a group and with the ordinance and, you know, going back and forth, I think that's going to take a long time. I think it would be it a long for, time. <laughs> I think we div divvied this up, and I think the goal of that is to uh, is to be able to, um, you know, to uh, uh, be more efficient with our time. Yes. So did you? Yeah. Uh, so access openings. Um, for all septic tanks are required to have a minimum of one watertight riser to finish grade in order to simplify location and maintenance. So the burden of pumping the septic tank the way you're doing is just removed by law. Yeah. Eight years after I did it, or 10 years after I built the house. So yeah. So these um, are this this was redone last September. Okay. okay. So that's uh so um inspection ports. I think I came across that someplace. Is that such a thing? What is an inspection? That would be the access, the riser. Still the same thing. It's the lid on the, the tank, basically. Okay, so that's good. We can. Uh, that's where the business is. 
we get that already. So, so I, I didn't understand what that meant. Does that mean you, you are required to have something that to physically the part grade. of the tank that, co that comes up? Yeah. You are. To the finished grade, so it's level with the... Now, is that a retroactive to, to older systems? No. no. Just how new systems are designed. Mm -hmm. as, as of... September 23rd, 2023. 23, okay. So it does not... Affect Chris's system. No, no, okay. So that's like, so then you have like a manhole cover, right? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. It comes up so you can get down into it. And so you pull that up, and then there's a space, and then you get that cement thing that you have to get up, and then your right. tank is below okay. that. Okay, great. Well, that's good. See, you get rid of that. <laughs> Progress. Um, okay, move on to the vegetative buffer and tree cutting. Um, so the, the first bullet point um, is uh, required that all properties have a vegetative buffer covering at least 30% of the distance between any structures and the lake. This requirement will be triggered on existing properties whenever a property owner applies for the permit. So, so that the uh, also triggered, so maybe, okay, so, so that's the change is that first sentence and then the second sentence is that this requirement will be triggered on existing properties whenever the property owner applies for a permit or any other permission from the town. Also triggered whenever more than one cubic yard of soil on the property is disturbed. Um, and then we have record buffer in properties B. So um, there's the um, vegetative buffer of 30% is the first change um, the second sentence is an explanation of how we're going to enforce that on existing properties. And then the third sentence uh, about a cubic yard of soil being disturbed um, would be a change. And then the record buffer in property D, which may be a separate bullet point. Um, what does everybody feel about that? Comments? Comments? Yeah. What was the third one you mentioned? Um, the third one is uh, that the um, well, that's more of an enforcement one. It, it's uh, it's a trigger um, yeah. point, which which would be also triggered whenever more than one cubic yard of soil yeah. on the property is disturbed. Well, I thought that was the second one. Uh, that's the the second one is um, this requirement will be. Triggered on existing properties whenever the property owner applies for a permit. So that's, I mean, it's all sort of the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then recording the product mm -hmm. buffering the property, D, which mm -hmm. um, I'm really fuzzy on that as well. So, does anybody have any comments on this? Didn't MMA give you a legal response to that already? Um, their, their response was on whether or not we could require a buffer on sale of the property. Right. And they said, no, we can't. But they did say that... Um, Expansion of a structure. They were whispering among themselves that if they would, would go along with expansion of the structure. Who was whispering? Planning? Planning. Planning. Yes. So yes. we thought that was a win. I agree. Right? Yeah. So I, that's, I feel imperative, <laughs> has to be in there. So when they put a foundation under a camp, can we require them to have a vegetative buffer after that? Um, this next planning board meeting, we will be discussing a condition of approval that involves vegetation. They cannot require a Buffer per se, because the property purchased is the property purchased. The rights of that property stay with the property, but um, they can do reach of vegetation standards. And the thing is, it's going to be in the ordinance, and they're working that in. We're discussing it the next meeting. Um, but as a condition, it has to be applied equally. It can't be arbitrary. What, what, what does that mean? You can't require this person to do it, but not that one. So there has to be a 
the discussion is going to entail the formula. Uh, we look right. at the sloped properties versus flat properties. You know, where runoff is more of an issue. Yeah. And right. But also, I thought we came up with like a percentage of acreage was a way to come up with. That's property. not going to fly. That's not going to fly. Okay. Percentage of the acreage, the percentage of the setback, the percentage of the distance from the structure to the lake, that's not going to fly? Pretty Why sure that was in MMA to address that. What, um, about the property rights to the unit. What the MMA said was that so, where a landowner proposes to undertake new development, expansion, alteration, et cetera, et cetera, and the government has restricted that conduct on the condition that certain reasonable standards are met, it can withhold its approval until unless the proposed proposal complies with its standards. So it sounds like if somebody's applying for a permit, you could require them, if you have a, in the ordinance that every property needs to have 30% you know, of the distance between the structure and the lake in a vegetative buffer, that you could enforce that if they were wanting to build a garage. No? I see lawsuits all over there. Um, and what would be the basis of the, of the complaint or the lawsuit? Someone, they bought the property as it was to enjoy as it is. Mm -hmm. And for the government to say that they can no longer use this piece of property to hang a hand if they have to grow a tree there instead. Yeah, but what they they only, only apply if they wanted to get a Yeah, so, so they bought it without a garage, so they can't have a garage, you know? Yeah. Well, um, they, 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 uh, the reason well, again, we are suggesting that is that in Arbor, and that's their standard operating procedure, that's how they... Right. Well, again, let's go back to, she read the ordinance and she discovered a whole lot of stuff she didn't know was there. And I think it might be due over here too. I'm sorry. And if you want to run it up, I mean, go forward with it if you wish. I'm just telling you what I have my perspective on it. Okay. No, I, I'm Push it forward. just interested in your perspective. Yeah, I mean, it seems, it seems to work in Auburn. And that's, we were, well, they, yeah, they're yeah, in that's different zone situation. Different other things. I beg your so Auburn has zoning and a lot of other controls. Oh, okay. And a larger legal budget. They have. Uh, a, they might be willing to fight that in court. Wars. They have a whole team of people that are, yeah. um, and, and they also can pass an ordinance without uh, voter approval. That yeah. was uh, significant. Yeah. City government. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, also, uh, but before we go on, also what we're talking about is not much of a buffer. We're talking about a no mo zone of ten feet. We would have to width of 10 feet. We we need where you as the expert in that area needs to define what a uh, vegetative buffer is going to be. Well, I when I wrote that thing, I wrote it two ways. One was that we talked about either 30% of the distance between the shore and a structure, or I think I said a 10 foot wide buffer extending the length of the shoreline with one or two accesses to the water, um, but calling it just simply a no mo. And then beyond that, I explained what a real buffer looks like, but it's not required the way I wrote it, just to explain. So, because everybody was saying that- We don't want an explanation in the, in the ordinance. No, or, well, just for purposes just, okay. of these people, I put in every scientific reference I possibly could because they weren't, they don't know this stuff, um, and try to put it, try to make it as basic as we as it possibly could be so that it would pass. So if we did something, we're not asking for people to build a five-layered buffer. We're just asking them to start by not mowing the first 10 feet. You could still put a hammock on there. You, there's a lot of things. Well, if you, you have a lawn, you, I mean, I, I guess you have a hammock on a frame, but um, okay, so. I mean, we so, also want to change this ordinance, right? We want to do what's best for the lake. And the one thing that is clear to me 
is that we need to have something about buffers in there. And if it doesn't go through, it doesn't go through. I know, I'm, to... I'm just, Jana, I'm trying to say, Sorry. What, how do we define a buffer? I, 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 so, know, I know why we're doing this. I know, you know, but how it, do we define So an effective buffer? buffer has five layers. It has a canopy, it has a middle story, it has some um, perennials, bushes, um, and then it has ground cover and duff. So, and each one of those things helps protect the land, either from the sun or the rain or the whatever. Would we require all five of them? No, that's what no. I'm saying. We can't do that because people are opposed to that. What I'm suggesting is we just say we require a no mow zone of a width of 10 feet or 30% of the property. Well, let's let's stick with thirty percent of. I would. I'd rather you know ten feet is a very minimal buffer. Well, I, I think. What, but the problem is, there's. I'm sorry. There's no. Um, there are all these little half little. I have so, some. Some people may not be able to do thirty percent. Well, I, mean, I, I think. I, I think what, what, the way we we decided earlier some weeks ago was uh, thirty uh, thirty percent or ten feet, whichever is smaller. Oh, of course, okay. because I went with oh, because and yeah, because there were the houses sure. like you were giving the example of your family camp or whatever, yeah, which is that, which is only uh, ten feet from yeah. ten feet from the from the pond. So in the, in that case, you would only be three feet, you know, three three and a third feet. I mean, it, it actually has a buffer. Um, well, fine. Well, that's you fine. Can yeah. Walk around, uh, but it's you know, there's no there's no grass there. And there's yeah. hemlocks and blueberry bushes and everything. Fine, fine. But, but but the point being that that's what we had talked about: thirty percent or ten feet, whichever is less. Which is ever is more. No, no. Whichever I, is less. I, anybody else remember whichever is less? I don't. Well, do we want to do. We need to say one or the other. Explain why whichever is less. Explain that. Well, because if you have a property that is, uh, if you have a property that's twenty feet from the lake, uh, uh, you know, and your thirty percent is going to be less than ten feet, right? So, but if you if you tell them to do ten feet and they're thirty and they're twenty feet from the lake, then it's fifty percent, and and we're not telling them that they have to do fifty percent because that is not, we feel that's we we had, in our earlier discussion we felt that was not a good thing to do. If it was always stuck at thirty percent, then um, then if they if they're a hundred feet from the lake, it's it's thirty feet, um, which is well. I, I think the assumption was that ten feet was adequate, not great, but adequate. Mm -hmm. So better than nothing. Better than nothing. So if it, it, it stop it stop at ten feet, okay, what thirty percent? No, but that anyway. Also, it's something I think that people can grasp. Like I was saying, reading that tree thing. I mean, it's all great stuff. Reading 30%, I mean, that's somewhat simple. But I also think it gives people an, an option, and it's generous to say whichever is smaller. Although when I wrote it originally last week, it was whichever was larger, because no. that's what I would like. That's that was just me, like. why? That was well, me, I, mean, that. I don't think you can have, uh, if somebody's, very close to the lake, you can't do 10 feet. Yeah. But you could do 60. I mean, perhaps. Or or maybe, I mean, isn't there um Hans, wouldn't the planning board or you say, okay, a buffer's not practical? Can't, can't we say to the greater the, the greatest extent well it's yeah. practical extent or talking about existing homes or new homes, because new homes. It's already in the ordinance that you can't clear you can't, right. 100 feet. feet. Yeah, well, 100 feet. You can clear some, um, no clearing within 75 other than your path. From the 75 to 100, there's some thinning allowed. I mean, they're for structural, you know, you're moving equipment around. But I, we're, we're talking about existing, somebody wants to build a garage uh, and they have a lawn um, from 50 feet down to the lake, uh, and, um, and so you're talking about existing house. An existing house you're trying to change. Wants to build. Wants to build a, a, a garage. Wants a permit from the town of Belgrade. Wants to do something. Wants to change that property from the 
where they bought it to a new thing. And, and we're asking, put in, and I would say a vegetative buffer would be more than no mowing zone. It might be uh, blueberry bushes. We could define it. I mean, that, uh, I think as something. Once you get into that, it is so complicated. Mm -hmm. What I just. Okay, so, but any, anyway, back to, uh, so. I don't know. Help me on this. <laughs> is that that is, it can, can, so? If they made an argument to the planning board that they couldn't put in a buffer, they still want their garage, but they can't. A, a bu buffer is not practical at all. So you call it a new garage. The new garage would have to be 100 feet back. Exactly. Yeah, but they need a permit for that new garage. So with the new garage that's beyond the 100 foot setback, you want to mandate a buffer up front? Yes. Yeah, we'll just just write it up and put it through. It ain't gonna happen. But, you know, legally, it's, it won't happen. And MMA, I think, spelled it out. You're just not reading it the way it's written. You want to read it the way you want to read it. Um, I mean, I thought that the MMA said that uh, the rights of the land stay with the land. And if they buy it without a buffer, we're not going to be able to mandate that the buffer be put there. We're going to let them make a change. So we're... I didn't read any caveats in there. There's nothing in there that says that now, but that's what we want it to do. We would like to be able to say that. No, no, you were talking about two different... You're talking you're, about... In, 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 you're saying in a municipal review is more appropriately triggered when the property owner is proposing to undertake some activity or action that is within the jurisdiction of the, of the municipality to regulate, and that falls within the scope of a property enacted local ordinance doing just that. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't know that, but okay. So I, I was just wondering if uh, that... If it could be applied to everybody, but adjudicated by the planning board, so they can't get a variance to get a garage within the shoreline. Within they well, we're not talking about the, we're we're talking about a a permit for something that um that's oh, permitted that yeah. is is compliant with yeah. existing ordinance, not a variance. Yeah. I'm just saying that, um, and this is what John Blaze advised us to do, and what they do in Auburn is that when there's a triggering event, and the triggering event would be to build a garage, uh, then you can bargain, basically, with them to say, okay, you want this garage, um, and that, uh, but we need you to be compliant on the uh, part of the ordinance that requires 30% um, of a buffer, and and then they say, okay, we'll do it uh, if we define what a buffer is, uh, or they say, well, I can't do that, you know, in this situation because of X. I don't know what that would be. That I don't think the planning board's going to go for that. And and wouldn't the planning board be in a situation to look at that and maybe have to do a site visit, visit and say, okay, um, we're going to vote on it. And if, um, to permit that, I put it forward and let it go through legal review and see what happens. But I know when it comes to the planning board, they're going to err on the side of avoiding a lawsuit. How many of these trigger events happen per year, do you think? I mean, I mean, we're looking at 100 or looking at 10 or 10. Oh, yeah, 10. Okay. How would this be a trigger event? You have a hot the camp is uh, 45 feet from the lake, and you want to add a deck to the side. And you we just had that at the last meeting, they had that. Right. And they and the deck right. and, and according to the regulations, that deck can can be added. There's enough space. We're just presuming that. Is that a triggering enough event to then say we've changed it? Now you would have to have a buffer. And that property was already at 100 foot. It meant all the No, I'm just talking one that's like 60 feet. So it's, um, not, it's not a conforming structure. Again, that property already had natural duck all the way to the lake. No, I'm just, I'm just talking not that property, just a property. A property that. Right, the property's there. The grass lawn, and you want to force a buffer in there. Is there what would a trigger event be if the 
the property is not conforming already because it's 60 feet from the lake, but it's permitted. How is it saying that there's? How is it saying that there is no such thing in the trigger as a triggering event in the town of Belgrade because of the potential of a lawsuit? But it seemed like that what we heard from MMA may be possible. I thought so. And I heard from the planning board. Right. I thought yeah. that they said that the as well. Anyway, but so anyway, so oh, our advice. I said put it forward. See what happens. Forward. I, no, I'm reading that. It's not likely, but. I might be reading it way different than you. Okay. So it's whichever is smaller, whichever is larger. I thought we talked about 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, whatever. And then we decided that a percentage was more appropriate. But if you're going to say one or the other, you have to say whichever is larger, whichever is smaller, you know? Um, Think if you're going to give people an option, take ten feet, throw that out the window. You're left with thirty percent. Oh, just the thirty percent. And I don't see what's the problem with thirty percent. I, I, do we really want to do ten feet? Matt, if everybody wants to do ten feet, I'm I'm okay with it. I just want to move forward. But I thought we were going to do thirty percent because some places ten feet was impossible. Other places it was inadequate. Um, do we think that a percentage is? Well, let me just give you an example. My my house is two hundred and ten feet from the water, so that would mean I have to have a seventy foot buffer. Sorry. No, you have to. Hmm? You're not not competing on a hundred foot feet. You're not. So are these only non-conforming structures that you're worried about, or does it? I, I was wondering that also whether it's everything in the shoreland zone. I think we started talking about only non-conforming structures. Yeah. Okay, so it's anything that's already within that hundred foot, which wouldn't be permitted today. Right. I think we should say ten thirty because then people are going to say, "How do I figure out what thirty percent is?" At least they know what so ten thirty is. is. You're probably very um, I know what ten thirty so, is, but I don't know what thirty percent is. So. I guess Lenny brings up an interesting or an important point is that if you've got a 250 foot lawn running down yeah. to the lake, yeah. what do we do? <laughs> well, I don't have 200 foot lawn, but I, my house is, as I say, 210 feet from the lake. Right. So, and I do see a lot of those lawns. Yeah, well, yeah. There's, there's, one, there's big a big lawn. So, all yeah, the houses. 51% of Mesa landscape is those big. On. So, so to clarify that, uh, the house is behind the 100 foot setback. So, often, um, not all of them, yeah, a lot of them. But some are, okay. Right. And others just have a giant lawn yeah. really close to the lake. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. there's a house about, I don't know, about less than a quarter mile from me where he's got a, he must have a, at least a 200 foot lawn, probably cl maybe closer to 250 feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, it's not terribly. It's a little. It's steep. It's 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 a slow slope, but not a very steep slope. Right. Um, hmm. Okay. I think you can talk me into ten feet. Then. Well, I'm just going to give up. Ten feet. Just, That's easy. Ten feet. Ten feet. Whichever is. No, no. Thirty percent. That puts you right back. And then the question is, what kind of buffer are we talking about? Well, that. Jan, I want you to define in uh, a, a short, para very short paragraph. I, I sent it to you. Don't look at it now. I did it. Um, and it explains what a buffer is as well as talks about a simple 10 foot no mow. That's in the request. So, 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 so can you give me something that's, hang on, Janet, can you give me something that's between a no, no mow and a five component? I'll tell you why. With if you leave the land alone, you've got trees coming up, you've got bushes coming up, you've got everything. But, but then you have a it'll hardship. Make, it'll make its five levels. But you have a hardship on the owner that their view that they you're allowed to trim it to you three feet. Right. You can trim. Right. And you know what else? You self-select and you make your view. It's just easier to do that. And you know what else I find? I tell people to do it. The next year they call me up and they say, 
I don't like it. I go back out there and I explain to them how you can self-select and how you can trim. And as you want to add a bush your life, you know? Yes, so, so Charlie, you can, so if, if on your property today, yeah. you can trim the big trees, what, 30%? One third. A third. A third of the branches up. I know that. So you can do that. And on the bottom side, you can trim everything at three feet. Okay. And that will allow, you know, your bush, basically. So that'll allow a view. Uh, and that's a right. legal. Okay. Yeah. Because that's a super important because uh, I, I think, and what Dave Roke, I believe, believes as well, is that the uh, shrubs and bushes and things like that are as important and maybe more important than big tall tree and what you don't want is people mowing those down to right to, to the ground and a lot of people do that so no, okay so no mow um all right good thank you yeah, yeah, I was yeah. learn something and uh, uh i like that so uh, uh, basically yeah, you see sitting down sitting down sitting down so you can have your view yeah. uh, chair on the water where the you know in the, in the part that you keep as a you know, lawn oh. Oh. Uh, we keep cutting a whole tree lot. We're going to die. That's okay. You're allowed to keep it at three feet. It's, you know, and you know, the question long term is going to be do you improve those standards over time? And right. you know, if you have a tree and it dies, you have to allow other trees to grow, or can you just keep everything at three feet? Um, you, yeah, but well, that's our that's getting in the weeds. Yeah. I think if you can get ten foot, I know we're, you know, we're going get a, to get a beach head. here, and it's it's all about educating people. I think slow, we got to do it slowly. Okay, and then we're gonna we're gonna stick with the the um, trigger events and see whether we can get that to fly, and then um, the record prop buffer in the property deed. Do clarify if it's only for if you know whether it's non-conforming structures or if it's everything in the shoreland zone triggers it. Right. I mean, you can make an argument for everything, or you can make an argument for the other. So, well, I think it has to be everything in the shoreland zone. That's yeah, because you know if you've got a lawn running down to the lake and if there's a hole, and it's you know. Conforming. Body of law around non conforming structure. So it could be, I think, one or the other. Um, but I think that's a discussion you all have with the planning board at some point. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. <laughs> what do we, once again, what, what do we think about the record buffer and property B? <clears throat> well, I, I guess I would. Ask what does that exactly mean? I, I mean, I realize you can write it into the property, but what is the implication of that? Um, because you know, buffers are living plants, and living plants die, and things happen to them. And it just, does that, that just mean that? Well, the buffer is now a no mow, 10 foot no mow. Yeah, so but, that just basically means that. Uh, that just establishes the fact that there is a buffer on the property and uh, that was required by the tenant. I see. Okay. Well, I don't think you should put in the deed, put it in the town records. Yeah. What, 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 town, what town records would you mean? It would be in the permit. Permit, you know, we, you'd have to record these as a and that document the buffer that was there. Somebody gets a building permit, and the and the planning board says, yes, you have to put in a, a ten. You have to establish a ten foot no mow zone as a note in the application. Okay, well, is, 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 is that something that can go into a building? A condition permit? of approval, and that lasts until somebody forgets about it. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Or where, where does that go? The yeah. property changes hands, and you know we have conditions of approval that. Yes, you can make this bunkhouse over here, but no plumbing and no. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that sounds familiar. Yeah, and now uh, there's a full kitchen, complement, bathroom, right. toilet, shower, gold works. And I bought it this way. Well, we better make it right. Here it comes the lawyers. Right. I'm thinking that the good reason to have it in the deed is that when they do the title search, they're going to find that and then be on notice. 
because otherwise the person could say, oh, I didn't know about that. Didn't and, know about and, yeah. You know, buyer, yeah. you know, it's probably, you can only be buyer aware if you have information. Okay. Um, but leave it in. Uh, I'm just asking. I just, yep. out of ignorance. Where is that that you're just talking about? I don't see it. First uh, part. It's that Where's first bullet point. Uh, that's the last sentence. Was but so you, yeah. Buffering property deed. Oh, 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 thank you. Um, and then the um, the next one is require all structure foundation drain pipes to terminate as far from lake as possible and include a feature to spread out the flow and encourage infiltration. Um, I don't seems like it would be that this would be make sense. I would change the as far as possible, make it as far as practical. I mean, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. but you're not gonna pump it uphill, right? And also, if you want to encourage infiltration, maybe that there's one, one area where. It's a little close, slightly close to the lake, but you get good infiltration. And if you send it further back, it won't. You know, it's... there's also circumstances where we've put in drain pipes to the lake because the property's so darn wet and just as like a mud pit because you know they got permits to build in wetland areas. <laughs> so many years ago. So not currently, but well, it's DEP best practice now to drain it into the lake. Into the lake. That is the. Believe it or not, these best practices. Yep, because because that water is going through the ground, being filtered. Usually, the water discharging is crystal clear, and if you discharge it on the ground, now you're taking all this runoff water from the roof or whatever around the house, putting it on the ground and making it pick up particles uh -huh. to uh -huh. go into the lake. Where is it? When it's subsurface water, it's already been filtered to the soil. I think your that practical language makes sense because if you're 100 feet back, you probably couldn't put it in the woods. But if you're if you're already 20 feet from the lake, you're going to have to, in this case, probably put it in the. So it's like it would be covered. In that case, would be covered because it's going to be a muddy area. Exactly. So it's that's not good. And it creates mold problems for the homeowner. It just uh, compounds a lot of issues. Yeah. yeah. And then when it rains really hard, the mud goes in the lake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll leave it in as, as um, but change it uh, to That's the lake is practical. Here. Yeah. 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 Um, requiring structures that have gutters that direct water away from the lake into a spreader. I mean, that's Dave Roke. Thought that was important. Well, again, gutter water, it's rainwater. It's crystal clear. Well, yeah, but crystal clear I think. doesn't mean that it doesn't have dissolved phosphorus in it. Well, no, also, if it falls off your roof onto the ground and then into the water, the idea is to funnel the water off your roof into either a drain. He said gutter water. It's gutter water, though. It's coming off of the roof, either without a gutter or with a gutter. It's, it's clean as long as it's up there, but once it lands on the ground and goes to the lake, that's when it's a problem. It's causing erosion. And I don't the... remember reading about that in here, well, so I don't know. Standard practice, standard condition of approval now requires the foundation to have the stone, the drip drains. Mm -hmm. Right. So it is going into the stone filter and into collection pipes, getting filtered. So... What is standard practice? Does that mean, does everybody know what standard practice is? And do they get somebody to tell them to? Because when I go around to places, I don't see that. I see it sometimes, but I don't see it all the time. And I'm the one that says to them for the first time. Well, in the plain word, it's part of the conditions of approval. Yeah, this is, this is what's yeah. for, cur for current construction. Or this has been sure. in place now for at least 40 years, maybe longer, but older places may not have that. 
So my question is, do we put it in here if there's some place where it already exists? Like we don't want to duplicate things. We want to add things that don't exist. Well, so section I, S, I believe it is, is stormwater. Have you read that? In here, I did, but I so, can't remember where everything is. Should we, should we strike this? Well, if he know if if Hans knows storm water, I'm gonna find it. Well, it's like this terminating prior to the water's edge. Again, DEP says they'd rather it go into the lake. They want them to terminate at, into the water because it's clean. The foundation drains, yes, because it was clean water. But do they know what amount of dissolved phosphorus is in that water? No, without sampling, no, they wouldn't. So, I mean, they may... Again, when you're taking a, a heavy rainfall and all the water is falling and you're making it go into a pool, I mean, check dry. Are you familiar with that one? Uh, yes, it was. That's a lot. Yes, every time. And that's the one. It I was referencing. You've got runoff going all through the woods. I mean, your duff isn't doing what you think it's going to do. It's sheets. And there's hundreds of gallons. They have a retention pond. It fills up. It overflows. There's... And and it has those pipes around the building. For we put those in, you know, several years ago because of it sitting in in mud in this for every spring. If you know, they got to permit in a wet area. So I, I'm familiar with check drive. What is your point about? What point are you making about it? Putting all this water onto the surface of the ground. Yeah. I don't care how far away you are. Yeah, it's not a good idea. Oh, I, oh yeah. Well, if it's in the ground, leave it in the ground. Yeah, Let it sit, you know. Oh yeah. I guess the word. Are we using that situation to drive everything? Does that make sense, or is that an exception? I think it's a great example of where a foundation drain, water that gets into it. Is cleaner than when your surface water. It be. appears to be cleaner. So it terminated it prior to letting it stay in the ground to the lake is better than putting it above the ground and allowing it to pick up more. It appears to be clearer, um, but we don't know how much phosphorus is in that from the water going down through the gravel. Well, I would assume DEP has studied it and they have the rule for a reason. Well, a lot of stuff is about erosion and, and um, septic systems are not designed to trap phosphorus. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, it's, um, I, I just I, I just have a hard time with a pipe into the lake. That's that's all. I mean, and, and once again, if, it, if it's not practical, then there should be an exception for that property. Uh, but other properties that you know, my sporting drains go down into a buffer short of the lake and probably short 20 feet of the lake and it looks great and i and if there's so much runoff coming off of but you know I, i'm i'm in a well-drained dry area but if there's so much you know there's not so much water that's going to actually load out of that pipe there's not much of anything coming out of it as far as I can tell. So, anyway, I, I don't know, man. Trying to be protective. You know, no, the, 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 um, what you read was talking more about gutters. Uh, well, it's, uh, we're, we're, we've tripped back to the previous one about the structure foundation drain pipes. We, oh, okay. We've regressed. Okay. Well, typically gutters do run into the foundation drain. Yeah. Right. They go below ground. They tie into the same pipes. It might just don't. But... So is that in the stormwater? I couldn't find it. Is, is how could so many things here? Is that in the stormwater section? Is something you said? There's that... a lot in the stormwater section. I don't have that one. I think it's the whole you know. thing crisscrosses. It's amazing. It's very hard to like some things exist. If you have a, a resistance wall, what's a wall? What kind of wall? Retaining Change. wall. So all the things that I would like to happen only happen if you have a retaining wall. Wait till you read it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wrong? Am I? There are I'm some. Really there are some kind of retaining walls designed that they are filtration. 
I mean, there's a property on Foster Point that, you know, their whole patio area, they've got um, these big flower, you know, retaining walls with flower boxes in them, and, and it's all filtration stuff. So, I mean, there's ways, and it's all described in that yeah, section. I did see to that. To design these things to, to be very, very effective. But again, it's not a one size fits all. Right. You know, you've got slope, you've got. Okay, so do we want to strike the foundation drains and the gutters. And then the, the, the bullet point after that is require stone under all structure drip edges, but that's already, yeah. uh, sure. already being done so that can be struck. Um, what, do we, what do we think about? Because I think that came from Dave Roke about the, um, the gutters. I know that. Did, but um, we can take these out. I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Take those out. What was that? that requires. We're going to take the drain pipes out, the uh, foundation drain pipes, and the gutters. Um, those two bullet points. Okay. With new construction, there's no requirement to have gutters, is there? It's not required, but the uh, drip. But then you have to have a, a enough of a drip line yeah. edge to. Catch everything, and and I think that's required with or without gutters. It's not a condition. Mm -hmm. It's standard practice. Required by whom again? Just so that I understand. It's standard building practice. Building practice. Okay. In in Bellary. Yeah. So the the next full point is no cutting <coughs> within the buffer without tree removal permit. Photos of trees to be cut sent to CEO. Trees to be cut must be marked. Erosion control measures must be taken. Some number of replacement trees must be planted. Post cutting evaluation by CEO. Um, I think this came from uh, our session with the um, uh, our yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you read it, that stuff is in there. So that so you can say that it's um it's already in the ordinance with yeah. photos? Not with the photos. That's the difference. Not asking for photos at all. So Hans was saying that you appreciate getting a photo of well, I kind of require it. Yeah. So yeah. It says approval and the ordinance says approval, not permit. We don't have a permit to treat. Yeah, well, right. It's like the approval process is they email me or so I, I require an email asking for the permission and the description and they have a site plan or photos, they send those. I'll visit it and email an approval back. So there's documentation proving what's approved. Well, and in fact, uh, I, 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 had, I had that very situation with your predecessor, uh, with Gary, your predecessor some years earlier, uh, with a, a big tree leaning uh, uh, in the shoreland zone, uh, the one where I mentioned where I want to have the stump ground now, and that's exactly what he wanted. He wanted me to send him some photos to document it and so forth, which I did, and then he approved it. So this that seems to be the practice, but do we need to formalize it in the ordinance, I guess, is the question. It lets people know what they're going to do, and I don't think it's asking too much. Well, most of the arborists follow that protocol because they want the truth. They don't want to be caught in the middle of a homeowner saying, yes, I've got approval. And then I come along and I find them both for doing something that was not approved. The arborists are, it's just business sense. Yeah, except near us, they just cut some trees down. and We don't know why or how or who did it. And is your, your approval, like you just said, is... You know, at least by email or text or something. When there's documentation behind it. Right. So if, if the if an arborist knows that Belgrade does that, then they'll ask for that or should of the homeowner and either see it or yeah, they want through. Do they give you a call directly sometimes or is it open? Yeah. Usually they contact me. Yeah. So you're saying we don't need to put it in here. Because well, you do it. 
it wouldn't hurt. I mean, that way anybody reads the ordinance knows they, they have to take well, I'm for that. I'm for that. Because that's just covering the armors, you know what good business practices. Okay. Yeah. Joe with the chainsaw would say, hey, yeah, my grandson knows how to run this thing. Yeah. I think that's that's not happening. So, so we had um when we were talking with the arborist, he was mentioning a tree removal permit. But um so should we Put in the ordinance that we you want to require a tree removal. We can put that in there. Permit. I mean, we could develop a permit process. Would you agree with that? Yeah. I think yeah. that it makes sense. No, we, have that. we don't have it. Not a permit. So when you give approval now, do you have an opportunity to charge it? Nope. But with a yeah. permit, you could? Could. Yeah. That has to come through the select board. Okay. I mean, your time is valuable, so I would say that permit should cost. I don't know. Yeah. And all the fines go to yeah. the line. So and the fines should no be way. they should come back to us to our legal. Absolutely. They do call it seven lakes of lines. Shoreland zone fines go to the Clean Water Fund. The Clean Water Clean Water Fund is what gets rated every year when the Seven Lakes Alliance asks for money. Uh -huh. or, uh -huh. Salmon Lake, Mesalon, or Frank's Mesalon, New York. Yeah. GP money too. You know, I'm never mind. That, that, Keep going. that ask that we do every year, yeah. you know, um, is funded at least in part by that, that pot of money. Okay. How much are we talking about? Depends on how good the year is. Well, when we call year. it good. On a good year. I don't know. They've had years in the past with uh, what Jabbar. They, Jobber. <laughs> Jobber, whatever. How much? How much was it? Was six figures. Sorry. He said 80,000. Yeah. Um, okay. So, okay, so we're leaving. Sorry. So we're leaving this one in there. Uh -huh. um, and we're going on to the, well, do we want to require a replacement, a number of replacement trees? And if so, what would that number be? Isn't that in there? I thought it was that's five. in there. Three, it's three to five per yeah, year, isn't it? I think y'all should read it. No, it's in there. All right, it's so in we're there. Pushing it's that. hard to follow and make happen, but it's in there. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, as I said, we're going to blue sky, and then now we got to get reality with the reading the ordinance. Okay. Um. This next one was uh, Dave Roke felt was important. Removal of organic duff, leaf raking, and smoothing of the natural pit and mound topography prohibited within a hundred foot buffer. Um, well, that's that hundred foot buffer is a problem for non conformists, but also I think some of this is in here. They talk about here, yeah, yeah, well, but I'm going to find it. It, it is uh, section 15. <laughs> oh, seven, I think it is. Oh, Close to there. So that, then uh, he also said that um, this next sentence is inspired by Dave. Uh, on properties where the duff has been removed or the pits and mounds have been smoothed, the layer of erosion control mix must be put down over the affected area. Um, and then the last point in no circumstances will a grass lawn be allowed to be established where one did not exist. That's supposed to under current situation, but it happens. Um, what do we think about these sentences? About what you're in the ordinance. Yeah, I think they're in the ordinance. Not this business about no grass lawns, but I think we're like, that's going too far. I mean, you could have a grass lawn as long as it's not my buffer. Um, this makes it explicit, though. And also the, the smoothing of the natural pit and mound topography, which I think is important. It is, but I think that's in here. I'll look for it. Okay, you look for it. If not, let's... I have question mm -hmm. marks next to everything to find it. Then this last one, look for the... Well, it's not the last one, it's the second to last one. Uh, stumps from removed trees may be ground down at ground level, but not below, and only by D, a DDP certified stump grinder. I don't think currently... That exists does it the DEP certified stump grinder and and I've we, never heard of one. We never heard of one. <laughs> okay, so we'll strike we'll strike 
Um, so we'll after, but not below. So um, it just strike the CE the -E certified stump parameter. I think it was talked about at, at our one of our meetings. But well, there, there is a, there's a DDP certification for for some for some earthwork some, contractors. Earthwork contractors. Yeah. They're moving disturbing soils. Right. In the shoreland zone. Yeah. Right. Uh, the last point is ban uh, of establish a ban on phosphorus fertilizer within children's zone liquid form nitrogen and potassium only. Um, it was seen that crystallized fertilizer could run off into the lake. Um, I think we, we went back and forth on this one pretty strongly. Um, I think that it makes a lot of sense to just ban phosphorus fertilizer. Any comments on that one? I just don't know if it's in here. I don't think so. I don't think so. Auburn had it. Auburn had it. If it's not in there, it should be. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, actually, uh, oh, here, proper record buffer and property D. There it is. Where? It's the last bullet. Say it again. Oh, you put it up front. That's why I was looking for it. Never right. mind. Anyway, um, you have an older version, I guess. Okay. Um, That's so right. We get to the Kimberly. Hello, Kimberly. Hello. Um, permitting. Um, so the first bullet point was what um, Hans had suggested when a state uh, DEP uh, permit by rule is issued, the CEO uh, must review and, and a permit issued by the CEO or the planning board. Um, Yes, Hans did recommend that. Um, I, I sent uh, some notes to you, Chris. I don't know if you received them today. I, I did. I did. Okay. Um, what did you say? <laughs> uh, it says when a state DEP PPR is issued, CEO must review and permit issue, and permit issued by CEO or PB, SCO section fourteen be amended to increase the CEO's knowledge and approval of PBRs. Hans Rasmussen recommended this amendment. Great. Well, that's sure to get the um, planning board's disapproval then. Yeah, it's like planning another. Seriously. They say you're really more like to be amended. Yeah, we, we're going to run out of people that we can actually reference in our uh, document. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> like some lines, right. 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 Um, okay, the next one is uh, all, all permits issued within the shoreline zone requires uh, town notification of abutters. And I think that, that this one would need to be specific within a certain number of feet, let's say. Um, and this is the whole logic behind this is that uh, Hans is not the only one that's enforcing the the ordinance. Is that um, if you get a notification that your neighbor has a permit to do X and they start to do X plus Y, then you can call the town about it. So that's the logic behind it. Any comments on it? Uh, no, I, I actually use the words um, increase awareness of permits granted and increase neighbors' involvement, is how I phrased that. Right. Well, you were saying something about a distance of so many feet. Well, I, I think we need to be specific with, with this. Is it just the uh, immediate abutting um, landowners, or is it um, within a footage? Which I'm, I'm thinking, I mean, administrative. The town has to go and send out voices. They have to figure out who needs to be notified and make those notifications. So, would it be immediate? Is it okay to just have the people on either side? I mean, we, we had a notification down in our property in Florida that was uh, for a property that two streets over they were getting a variance and, and we were notified and it was. Had to figure out what that house was. So it is just the immediate abutting um, owners sufficient, do we think? 
I think the uh, abutting property owners is sufficient. Yeah, and that seems like it's clear cut and, and achievable. So if the town wouldn't send out the notice. Would they, the homeowner that wanted to do something, would send out the notice and no, provide no. documentation? One from the town. From the town. From the town. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if that would also slow down a project, I'm thinking, because there'd have to be a review time to allow. I'm not saying yeah. for or against it. I'm yeah. just thinking there's some kind of period of time to respond to the notice. Well, this he said this was a notice of the permit being issued, being not issued, notice, not approval or you know review. review and okay, so it's just something happened. Okay, so, yeah, okay. I think it's they just like tell you the date different. of the of the meeting to get the variance. Well, that was that was a planning board. If there's a, a variance for a commercial use, but that's different. Yeah, yeah it's different. I'm curious why you got one, but. <clears throat> Well, they will. They wanted a variance to build towards the lake. This was years ago, and they, I got a notice from that. But today, I mean, I see as a like Kimberly said, an awareness to the neighbors that the scope of the project. Yeah, it's it's, it's um, increased awareness of permits granted and increased neighbors involvement. So and then the last one is use trigger event, cutting tree, building permit, et cetera, to require owner to bring property into compliance on vegetative buffer. Um, <laughs> eating that one up yeah. quite a bit. So uh, yeah, maybe we just leave it down for now. Yeah. yeah. And then we get into town roads. Uh, yeah. What's that? I was worried at five o'clock. So we are here. Well, we got two minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, actually, it's about one minute. Um, for your section. Mm -hmm. um, it's only one minute. It's fine. Require all roads and driveways, driveways and the showings to be registered with the town and compliance with standards. So, I don't know about that. Registering roads and driveways. New roads be registered with the town. Um, yeah, well, this says all roads. All new roads. Well, the, the oh, you're suggesting all new roads? Well, that's what I that's what I that's what I put down here. Was new roads? I don't know that you you can oh require um, existing roads be registered, but you you can give it a, give it a try. Uh, that I mean, that would require every every property. Let, let's just take driveways for example. Yeah. Every property that's within the shoreline zone and has a driveway, you re require every single one of them to register uh, with the town and be in compliance with standards. Yeah. So, so that would be yeah, the you know, that's not the standards. standards. What are rules? Standards? Yeah, well, well, that's there. set out here. That's set out that the standards are. Uh, in accordance with the uh, Maine DEP's gravel road maintenance manual in, in the in April 2016 uh, version. Uh, so uh, that's what we're saying. I don't think you can do that. Right. For existing ones. Right. New For existing ones, ones yes. But new ones you can. Well, that's what we're proposing for new ones. Now, of course, that, that, what, what's left unsaid here or not mentioned, and what I, I certainly thought about is uh, this is that's this is what, what, what I have written down here is that uh, or what's a, what uh, uh, section 5G, 15G in the in the in currently in the shoreline zone ordinance, whichever is stricter. But uh, the gravel road maintenance manual only talks about gravel roads, and many people. Um, to pave their driveways, so that's not that's it's a different beast. Mm. So, so I have a paved driveway. I did originally when the house was built, but it's paved now. But having some thought about the paving situation is is important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and how you manage that. Because they need good drainage too. Oh, oh, absolutely. 
It certainly needs good drainage. There's no question about that. But I mean, you can't depend on the gravel road maintenance man yeah. if you don't have gravel road, if you don't have gravel roads. You know, so. so are you saying that this is covered by 15G already? Uh, it, it is already uh, to some extent, uh, but okay. I mean, well, but, I mean, they already talk about road. There's quite a, a significant section in there about roads. Um, so I was just saying the, stand, the road standards, um, um, whichever of the two is stricter, uh, that was my suggestion. That was all. And do you want to add something about paving? Well, that, that's, I don't know enough about how you would write a standard for paving that I could say anything. Mm. That's uh, yeah, uh, right. I, don't I mean, I know I know a reasonable amount about paving and what how what you need to do before you pave, and about drainage, but I don't know how to write the standard. But, but drainage could be the same as what's in the road main, the gravel manual because I think that's generally considered best practice. Yeah. Um, you know. Hans may have other sources that okay. are specific to paving, okay. but you could say the drainage standards all ought to be to those standards. And then in addition, you're putting, you know, you know, pavement on top of that. And um, and it should really follow the only thing you change is the sort of the grade of the crown. There's a little less crown with a paved road than with a gravel road. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. by design and everything and else. And, and there's no infiltration at all on the paper. And there is some there. Not on the surface. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and so you're saying on the first bullet point, that's um, the first bullet point that, uh, that I, uh, on my page or you mean? Uh, on my page. Oh, okay. Uh, require all roads and driveways in the showings and be registered town and, okay. and, and all new, you would say. Yeah, I, yeah, but, I, I think we can't do all. Uh, but can we do, are you addressing this in here? Or, um, <laughs> the last one. So you did it in. Yeah, they're not in the same order. Okay. Yes. So, um, you can. You can do old when, again, you have a triggering event, yeah. but whether you want to try to do everything other than a buffer during a triggering event it, it was probably burdensome. Right. So, mm. you know, if you had to put in a drip line trench and you had to register your road and you had to put in a buffer all because of a 10, you know, 100 foot deck, you know, that might feel burdensome. So, yes. So, so can we strike this whole section? Uh, we don't, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I don't know. I'm not saying that. No, I think that. I think the reference to the BP's gravel road maintenance manual is probably a good idea. I, so that's certainly not in the ordinance. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the ordinance again more carefully before I would say that. And I think for new construction, it's good to have a standard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, personally. Mm -hmm. but. If we refer um, or use something like the Road maintenance manual for roads. Could we refer to Lake Smart as a um, standard reference for a standard? You could, but you know, I think that's well. The one question here with the manual, you here's the manual, and it's right there. It, it's written out in black and white, so to speak. Uh, it, it, can you? Can you? Is is are the Lake Smart? Requirements yeah. specifically set out the same way. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of aspects to it, though. So if you go to Main Lakes, there's a handbook on buffers. There's a handbook on um, best practices for a building. You know, there's a whole bunch of them. So you'd be able to go to Lake Smart and you say, "Oh, I'm building a house. What do I do about running running off the roof?" And it, it gives you all the possible ways to do it. It talks about infiltration steps and drip lines and all kinds of things. It's a little bit, it's not in a book, but it is, it's online. Yeah. And yeah, I, I guess, you know, 
Voting and closing, where would we? I'm just wondering if we could, okay, because people don't know about Lakeshore, I thought maybe we could let them know about it would be a reference if they well, look at I'm not saying that they need to meet the standard. It might be something we do outside the ordinance. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, uh, so Clay, what do you want to do with um, put that in the middle. town roads, camps, and uh, camp roads and driveways? What should I change to the document? What should I strike? What should I leave in? What should I do? Oh, I'm confused. Uh, well, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have that. I didn't bring that document with me, so I can't say it. Yeah. So, I don't know. yeah. Maybe you want to take a look at it and yeah. and and suggest what you know. Once again, specific change we want to make. Yeah. Um, right. If anything, because uh, it, it looks like there's a bunch of stuff that's already in there. Yeah. Right. Right. Well. Well, as I say, we're out of time. We need to discuss this. this the, I'd like to, if possible, to make reference to the, the to the gravel road maintenance manual um, on this item, on this bullet item, on the second one, on, on the thing about um, about building uh, building up the road if if you're near groundwater table. Right. That's something we need to talk about. Yeah. What I say here in my note is. We need to be able to measure and specify the top the, the top of the groundwater table. Um, so we just need to talk about that and see if that is possible, if that's feasible. Because the How to top, turn that into a ordinance specific ordinance. Yeah, that you're right. Because, because that does change, you know, with the season and with the precipitation, it even changes. Um, from decade to decade, or you know, from yeah, this area this came from Dave Roke and, and yeah. uh, maybe um, you know, um and so maybe I can go back to him and yeah, I mean I because you know we were in a fairly dry spell back in the mid to late teens and the ground and the groundwater table was considerably lower than it is now. So how do you deal with that? Right. Uh, yeah, I mean he was adamant about it, but yeah, well, that's, I, I, it's, that's, it's a gift. Yeah, yeah. But almost in thinking, you know, like a septic system, you have to bring in a site evaluator. You'd almost have to do the same thing for a new road in order to really take a look at those soils and evaluate it and then sign off on the design. Right. Um, I, it almost, so that's that's a level of complexity that you may or may not want to get into. But, you know, within the shoreline zone, maybe it's really important because there's And so there's not that many new roads going in, so maybe it's worth it, but it is an extra cost to the homeowner to hire a soil evaluator to design the road properly, and right. according to Dave. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, and, and you make a, a very good point, uh, Chris, or an important point here that the, the majority of the problem, uh, like in that piece that that um, Pat sent out, wisdom according to Charlie Baker, uh, about the roads, is the great majority of those roads, the, uh, the miles of those roads that are really problems, are not in the shoreline zone. They may be very close to the shoreline zone. They may be a few hundred yards or a quarter mile from the shoreline zone leading into the shoreline yeah, zone. Right. Yeah. But the road parts of the roads that are really the problem are not actually within 250 feet of the lake. Right. They may be four and five and 600 feet from the lake. Oh, yeah. contributes to it. And they contributed in coming in, but uh, yeah, they're not, there aren't that many feet within, the, with, by the time you get to 250 feet. But there are a lot of driveways. And there there's are a lot, lot of bad, driveways. there's a lot of good driveways and a lot of bad driveways. And, and especially on any new construction, right. I think you have a, and yeah. ideally, Left, you know, figuring out a way to address the old construction in the long run is a good thing, but start with the new stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Hey, it looks like, all right, what about that? We're done. Thank okay. you. It's probably going to get kicked out. Well, I guess it's because Hans is here. All right. Hey, Chris, this is Chris.